Welcome to Gloria's Gab Live. Today, I have two really interesting guests and uh, people I actually have read. I've got two uh, writers, novelists, um, Anna Viciana Suarez and Rochelle Weinstein. And uh, it wasn't until I was getting ready for this show that I realized I'd written, I'd read some of uh, Rochelle's books and, uh, and I'm dying to read Dulcinea, uh, which is like such a hit. And because I'm a Spanish major, you know, so thank Natural. you both for coming. I know long drive for you, Rochelle. <laughs> yes, but I know that it's all going to be worth it. And thank you so much for having us. Oh no, it's my pleasure. <laughs> and I am so excited. They, we have some exciting news to share with you guys. But uh, before we start, we have to thank South Florida PBS. South Florida PBS sponsors our show every week. And, um, if you're a member, and I'm sure you guys are, best resource we have in Miami-Dade County. Uh, and uh, aside from all the great programming they do, um, allhealthtv.com. If you have a question or need any information, you can go to um, all, allhealthgo.com. I don't know. They have, they have a hashtag that I always forget, but uh, <laughs> but allhealthtv.com has some great shows. And Dr. Leah, if you haven't been on Sex Talk show that she has once, once a week, it's so interesting. Anyway, so let's get started. You guys came together and have decided on doing something really, really interesting that everybody is going to enjoy, me included, because I'm a reader and uh, blog have a book club that I can't wait to share with them what you guys plan on doing. So who wants to talk first? I think Rochelle should tell our story because it's almost like we were destined yeah, to meet in very, a way. It was, it was serendipitous for sure. So um, first of all, I'm <laughs> my mom knew Anna's husband, Leo Suarez. My mom was a camp counselor at Camp Mountain Lake, which a lot of Miami people know this camp in North Carolina. So my mom knew Leo and, and she, my mom also followed Anna like obsessively on in the Herald back in the day. Well, I think um, most people know yeah, she's so syndicated columnist. Yeah. Syndicated columnist and she, her, her articles on women and mothering and, and loss and forgiveness and children. I mean, I always say that Anna, in addition to my mom raised me, my mom had all her articles on our refrigerator, you know, so we had the Leo connection. We had Anna on my refrigerator. And I just, you know, I, I say, in addition to my mom and Judy Bloom, Bloom. <laughs> Judy Bloom right. that Anna Another raised me. And then when I went off to college, my mom would send me Anna's articles in, you know, an envelope. And I, I'm always, I, I want your, I want your archives. Like I want to make a book of all of your archives because I feel you like it's such an important thing. Embarrassing. I didn't save them. You know, as a journalist, you go week to week and you're just, I mean, of course, they exist online oh my God. now. But... I need them. I need them. That was my childhood. So fast forward, and I've written, it was my second novel, The Morning After, and my friend Jessica Jonap, who is the literary publicist down here, she's incredible, and she introduced Anna and I, and it, the, the Morning After was a book that my husband's twin brother, he was the world's leading expert on this very rare genetic disease. Mm -hmm. So it had this nonfiction component to it. Yeah. And next thing I know, Anna's in my living room interviewing me. And that was the beginning. Um, do you want to take it from there? Yeah. And then we just kind of kept in touch. She introduced me to Merle, to, to Merle and another writer that I was telling you about. You know, mm -hmm. she does her legacy work, which I think is amazing. Incredible. And we just stayed in touch. And, you know, we'd run into each other in author events. And then she we, we ran into each other at the at the book fair, fair, the book yeah. fair. And I was telling Anna, I used to be on NBC mm -hmm. six as their book contributor. Right. And the, the show went off the air mm -hmm. and I just was so upset about it, disappointed, I should say, because I felt like it was such an important segment, you know, reading South Florida and, you know, South Florida's changed and it's evolved and the culture and whatnot. So we run into each other and I'm telling Anna that I really want to find a place that we could that I could do this again. And you said you need to talk to Grant Miller. Miller, right. Right. And okay. then we so, just... So, yeah, and because, you know, in Miami, everything is two degrees of separation. I knew Grant separately, 
But our sons played baseball together when he was baseball commissioner. Everybody's because played baseball. Baseball with Grant. under yeah, under, <laughs> under Grant. So we thought, okay. And so I actually texted him right there, and and then so I thought your husband she, was like texting yeah, him. Yeah, she's and... oh yeah yeah. Let's just and then she, you know, I thought she was going to go ahead and do it on do my own. This. I mean, I have like you know. I'm doing my own little thing here. And next thing I hear, she says, would you like to do this? I thought, oh, oh, my gosh, is this, you know, this is really out of my comfort zone. Which is good. And then I thought, well, why not? I just felt that we were such a good, like we complimented each other. And she brings so much wisdom and so much experience. And she's like my so idol. I'm with her. <laughs> oh, she's, I know. But she's that, my idol. This is such um, a good story. And I just, you know, and even talking about like in books, and we're huge readers, both of us. And we have, we have, we we have a couple of the same. But you know, she's right now. You've got the grandchildren in middle grade and children's books, and you know. Yeah. So I've gotten into because I like buying right. books for my grandchildren. So it's, you know, something that she's not. And I said, oh my gosh, there's these books that are amazing. I mean, you yeah. read them as a writer and you think, wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So there was just so much history. It just almost made sense that it led to this. And I know that we haven't even said what this is. Okay. So well, why don't we say what this is? So we are launching Book Talk with Rochelle and Anna. So awesome. Book Talk with Rochelle and Anna, uh, it's going to be a monthly segment with um, uh, our picks, our three picks each month, which, as you can see, it's going to be a very diverse, you know, let's, different kinds of genre, nonfiction, you know, um, women's fiction, romance, you, uh, local, indies, you know, we're really going to try to cover the non gamut. Nonfiction even? Yeah. Yeah, right. So we're going to do our each of our three book picks, and yeah. then we're going to go into a author interview. And then at some point, of course, we're going to want to have Mitchell Kaplan, the, the guru oh, yeah. of, of the, books, hello. you know, and um, any other where it makes sense for, in publishing, we'd have them on. And then we have something called the nightstand. <laughs> the nightstand. That was a cute. That, I yeah, love where that we, idea. We feature a, a local and we have a very special a uh, person who picked their favorite book, a very special Miami person, uh, who picked their favorite uh, favorite book, which like surprised us yeah. both. Yeah. You would never associate this book with that this person. person. Okay. Yeah. But and I think that that's going to be something that viewers will enjoy. What is on somebody's nightstand? What are you right. really reading? Yeah, right. So we know who our first author pick, and this is an incredible, incredible, very well-known person in the publishing world. But And then there's the person for the nightstand, which we're not is, is a pretty prominent person. Uh -huh. You know, what's on their nightstand or what's their favorite read? But at the same time, we've already talked about, you know, not just notables in Miami. We want to know, like, what the checkout person at Publix is reading, you know, and we'll highlight them. So we just want we want to share the love of reading amongst the Miami community. Yeah. And you're right there. There are there are so many different tastes uh, mm -hmm. in literature uh, and uh, and apparently you two have covered it for me. <laughs> Pretty much, although I've read some that uh, I I didn't expect to be as good as they were. Codebreaker. Oh, have you read that no. one? No. Oh, you need to read that one. Okay. You're gonna love it. Okay. It's it's yeah, it's almost like a textbook, but it's a mystery on top of it. It's so good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's one for you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Check it out. Yeah. So, so tell me, how do how do you how did you both, because you're both, now you're both novelists, um, but how did you decide to, um, when you start to, to write a book, do you have, like, are you thinking for a while about ideas and then you go, okay, this makes sense. And then how do you develop your characters? Because I would love to write, but, you know, I read you guys and I'm going, I, I'm a reporter. I, <laughs> I'm not a writer. Um, so tell me. Is it just something that you want to well, go first? I, I know Rochelle. I mean, she does a pretty much a book a year. 
I mean, she is always I'm writing almost. or editing. I, I'm, like, blown away. And Anna's it, eating donuts. I'm see, and I'm eating donuts. <laughs> I'm talking to her the other day, and I said, well, I'm already home. She was only halfway through. And as I'm talking, I said, well, I really need to get rid of this donut box. So I ate the two donuts to get rid of. And then I, told I went her, home to edit. Oh, she was my. eating donuts. Oh my, gosh. oh, my God. But, you well, know, for me, I... not I, wanting to waste food. Yes. yes. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to throw away the donuts with a box. But I always kind of have an idea or I get obsessive. That's the one um, thread that I've seen through my novels. As a journalist, mm -hmm. you know, you don't always pick your subject. You right. know, you're assigned. But, you know, I have to get really obsessive. Then it's like what, you know, and I've heard other writers talk about that. It's like the grit in the oyster and it, it just builds up. But it could take a long time. Like Dulcinea, I thought I wanted to write a book about Dulcinea when I was in high school. Oh, really? Here it is 50 I years later. I got to it. But it's, you know, just something that builds over uh, time. And it is just something that I become really fascinated with and then, well, you know, start how, digging. How much research did you have to do? Because I would think well, when you do historical. Yeah, I had to do, I probably spend about a year and a half and I must have read just alone in Cervantes biography. I read oh. six of them. Oh, wow. So, uh, and then I had to read a lot of um, diaries of that time. So I was fortunate in that, both in Spanish and Catalan, because it takes place in Barcelona. Wow. And then um, also just books about customs and history, um, but mostly details of daily life, which is yeah. not what historians normally cover, but that's what you need as, as a novelist. And then I, you know, I plot, that's something that we talk. I have to know the ending and I have to know my well, first yeah. paragraph. I can't, and yeah. I outline, I use an Excel spreadsheet. I'm just kind of like over the top. Of course I do this and it's a safety blanket because a lot of times I don't follow it. Then right. like... Oh your my Your character, gosh. your character. Takes yeah, then you. I let's but when just you have go a lot of it. stuff happening at one time, you have to mm -hmm. figure out. Oh, did it, did this happen before this, or you know, yeah. or did somebody sure. know something before right. the other person right. did? And you, yeah, how do you keep track of all that? <laughs> Excel spreadsheet. Is that, well, that makes perfect sense. Do you use Excel? I use Excel for my word count. I have accountability partners Ooh, for my uh, word count. So we try which to is do, amazing. Yeah. I try to keep a word count, you know, daily, uh, five days a week. But well, my sure. ideas, um, I was not always a writer like you. I was I was in the music business. I was in the entertainment business. Um, I had a diary. That was where I Ooh. would write my thoughts and my emotions. And I didn't want anybody to read anything I wrote except my brother, who I always count as my first reader when he stole my diary and read it and wrote little notes in the margins, my first <laughs> official reader. Um, so I was a little bit more, you know, timid and, and insecure about writing for the greater world. And when I was in uh, the music business and my company was moved to New York, I had a year severance and I had twin boys that were just born at the time. And I was like, what am wow. I going to do with all this time? And, and, um, my people don't like when I say this, but I was a militant with the with the napping and the schedule, the twin schedule, and they napped three hours a day. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to write a book. You believe that? <laughs> Whoa, you were super mom. <laughs> no, I was not. So, but I decided I was going to. I had a story to tell, and the root of my story, that first story, was it was it was thematic. It was a feeling. It was an experience that I had had. And um, and it was based on relationships and parental and children relationships. And I just sort of fictionalized something that, you know, really resonated with me. Like, so mm -hmm. it starts with an emotion. Yeah. And also for books start with in a place, like I'll go to a So that was my first book. It started with like an emotion that I needed to exploit, let's just say. Right. And then um, I go to a place and I feel a place and I don't even know who my characters are, but I like went to Vizcaya recently with my husband. We had like a date afternoon and we haven't been there in so long. And I said, I have to have a story here, set here. So it starts with sometimes a feeling, sometimes with a place, wow, and then I get to my character. I love that. And you? Yeah, for me, it's just I'll become a lot of times it's like a character, 
I see. Um, but like I'm working on a book now that was did start with a character. It was a thesis I read for <laughs> 370 some page thesis that I read when I was researching Dulcinea. And there were only certain parts I could use, but there was it introduced me to this whole other obscure era in history. And I thought, wow, wow, this is interesting. Then I kept reading it and reading. We went to visit the uh, family and do some research in Barcelona. So I did more of that. So and it's another then, one that's going to take place in Barcelona? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just figured now oh, that I'm well. owning that. Yeah. I'm owning I was gonna say, 16 Baroque Barcelona. That's my my. Timeline your series. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just do, you know, that. Now that I've done all the research and know what people wear and what yeah, happens right. and stuff, a lot of that day-to-day -day research or information you need to inhabit that world, I already yeah. know. Yeah. You know, right. it's so, just... So it should come easily. So you should have a book out well, a year. Well, you would think, there right? You know. <laughs> yeah. Just, we'll see. <laughs> like, I'm sitting there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and, and you, do you always... Uh, aside from like local, have you done things that took you out of your comfort zone when you were writing them? So it's mainly like structuring of a novel that has taken me out of my comfort zone. Right. Um, like, for example, I'd always written in first person. I, I switched to like third person recently. So right now I'm like having the biggest challenge in my writing career, and that is uh, my next book that's coming out in February of 2025, um, it has five main point of views. So I'm writing five different characters. Oh. I'm not doing it in first person because that would be crazy, yeah. a nightmare. Um, so it's third person, but still just capturing their nuances. So I'm keeping track of all of these characters and where I left off in the last chapter with the character and just pulling all the threads through. That's really taken me out of my comfort zone. Well, and that's the one where there might be issues when you're dealing with one character, you're telling one story, you have to make sure that when they interact with the right. other ones that you, right. that's when you need your Excel right. sheet, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, I actually have an Excel spreadsheet for all their ages. It's called Ages and Stages, and it, oh, it's like everyone's go. in a different color and what happens, like a life bite that happens at a certain time. So yes, I do use the Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. Because when when people when I read novels that people do that yeah they they develop one character and I love that because then you really understand and you you know you get a real sense right. of the person so I I love that when when writers do that um, but I but I often wonder oh my god you know or I wonder if anybody's ever found a mistake is that that's what your editors oh, yeah. are for yeah oh yeah. Unfortunately, so. sometimes you find them after the book's exactly. out. I mean, it happens. They're, <laughs> we're humans. Yeah, right. So you've had it happen to you? I think we've all had it happen to us. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And I, what do you do? On the next printing, you change it or you fix I it? I guess you can. You can change it on the Kindle uh, immediately. Right. Oh, that's true. So yeah. you do that, but in other situations. Yeah. It just goes. And then when it goes to another printing, then you can do can it or in it. paperback. You know, I've had, oh, I sure. remember, yeah. with yeah. my first novel, I mean, how many times through how many editors? And it was a typo yeah, that really. nobody caught. Really? Yeah. Sometimes you read what you think. And yeah, sure. I just... You expect to, to see instead of well, what you see. Well, it also could be something as simple, and I think this happened to me recently, where... There was, I feel like somebody must have nicked a keyboard. It could have been me. It could have been anybody. And like an extra letter was put on the end of oh. a word. And then when we went into final edits, we had only highlighted like the last revision. So nobody saw that. It just was completely missed. Oh, um, wow. But it happens. Yeah. Uh, I actually have, have found mistakes in novels. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's that's the worst. why I ask you. Yeah, it's but, the worst. But when you got, you know, 500 pages or whatever, I mean, come on. Well, for me as a journalist, and you know, you probably have this too, I needed to know that all the facts, known facts about right. Cervantes or anything else, you know, the wars going on, were true. So I was checking it three or four times. And my husband said, you know, no reader, and I bet you no historian is going to know that much. But I said, I have to know. I understand that. I, I have to know that it is right. Yes. I mean, it's just... I yeah, feel yeah. like I'm the last no. 
person standing and I've got to make name. sure. You it is. Make, yeah, it's your name. So you want to make it right. I yeah. understand that. So, so is there anything while you're writing that uh, you say, oh my gosh, I wish I had put this in, and, but it's too late. We're already on the last, you know, or, or things that you wish you'd left out. <laughs> so I'm a little bit of a hand wringer, according to my, my editor. I'm always like, <laughs> um, I, you know, the best thing I think you can do for a manuscript is step away from it and see it with fresh eyes. And sometimes you don't have that time between edits. So I'm always like thinking of things like, oh, and my eyes have been away from it for a while, like that I could change. This is the exact reason why I don't read my books when they're out. Once my book is out yeah. in the world, I, I never read. I don't read a page. I don't read a line. I don't listen to the audiobook. I do nothing because I will come up with 95 Wait, yes. different things that I want to change. And then it just messes with yeah. your head. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I would think. Because yeah. you can't do anything. No. I've never had to r written a book, but even my columns, you I, say, I, 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 I send them out the next day I'm reading, I'm going... Oh, you know, I've always got edits. Writing is rewriting you could, and you just, you could edit and it just, it can never end. It's like, it's like this infinite vacuum. It's, <laughs> it's a black hole. <laughs> it is a black hole. And I just, you have to, at some point you just have to stop and you just right. have to let your baby go out into the world. Yeah. So you've never read your bo own no, book? No, I would never. I'd be like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do anything about it. I know, just... yeah, I know. And once it's out, yeah, no, just let it go. You got to let it go. It's like kids. Yeah. Yeah, right. You know? You got to let them go out into the them, world. You, yeah. try to, you try to do everything you can for them, and then it's like too late <laughs> once it's gone. Uh, so what So what? What are you guys doing next? I mean, we don't, we can't, we don't know when you're going to launch your show yet, right? Soon. But it's pretty soon. 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 <laughs> and... Uh, and you're going to do it here mm -hmm. in this. We love this space. I've, we feel like we're in a cozy little nook, like a little reading know, nook. Isn't that nice? And it really it's just, you know, I don't know if we said this earlier, but it's just, we. Connie Ogle was also like a, a an idol for me growing up and seeing her reviews in the Miami Herald. And we've just, you know, I don't think she's reviewing anymore. I don't know. I mean, she re freelance reviews. Right. And that was one of the things right. that kind of motivated me. Aside from between the covers, PBS, right. that doesn't... And I think that's what... That is the only, yeah. you know, media, general media, devoted to books in South Florida. And, you know, I know growing up, and, you know, same thing with Rochelle growing up here, to see what Miami was like and Correct. how it has become a truly literary city you know and yeah. thank god for the miami book fair and for mitchell kaplan and eduardo yeah. padron who were these visionaries who brought this That's and amazing. the media has not grown with it right. and we think this is going to fill what is you know a huge hole that shouldn't exist well, you know i'm hoping that this show will show people that there is a vast interest in this and that you know the networks will take heed and say hey you know <laughs> <laughs> we got to get this duo on no yeah. <laughs> because it, be it, careful what you wish for <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> you may have to no, drive i just far listen again. i just feel that we are such a vibrant cultural community and it's just teeming with innovative uh, readers writers people i mean we've got jim grapanza we've got bread Meltzer here we've got We've got all I, kinds of, you know, local writers yeah, just from UM just, and FIU oh, no. that are, and I then get, who I are Miami adjacent, who yeah. were born and raised in Miami, but then because of work lives somewhere right. else. But Miami yeah. is part of what they write. Right. Well, I have, I, every once in a while, I'll get somebody just to, I know it's a local writer, and they'll send me their their, their book or whatever. And uh, I have gotten some really, really interesting books that oh, yeah. just are so good. There are and so many books out there. So there are so many there, good you know, writers All in kinds Miami. of publishers and from yeah. indies. And it's just, we want to get the word out there. And listen, 
it's personal, I'm sure, for you in some ways as it is for me. But I grew up a huge, avid reader. Like reading was my truly my escape. Like true reading was my mm -hmm. comfort. And I, it's just so important for me. Like I, I daily get texts from friends like, OK, what should I be reading right now? You know, oh, really? and I'm yeah, like, what should I be reading right now? And I just wanted a place that we could you know, and certainly there's going to be those bestsellers that we're going to be portraying, but then there's mm. also going to be these these other authors that put their heart and souls into book and they just want to get recognized. They want yeah. their voice to be out there. It's just yeah. so important. And and it's interesting because there, there are some that are like, okay, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's others you go, why isn't this on the bestseller list? Yeah. Uh, well, this there is are really books, good. right, that are under the radar. Yeah. And when you read them, yeah. because I think a lot of times other friends – of yours. Not everybody's going to have your same mm -hmm. reading interests, mm -hmm. but you know your friends who do, and they'll tell you, and that's your reaction. Why? I why haven't I heard? And you know we both read a lot about the industry. Tons. Why haven't we heard about this? Yeah, I I have, and I've I've read I read books like decades ago that I thought were so good, mm -hmm. and then you tell Have you ever read so and so? And they'll go, No. no. And I go. One of the best books I ever read. You haven't read it. You need to. So, and that, well, listen, it's a subjective business. We all know that. So, it, you know, it's it is. You know, but, it's you know. Uh, there, there's one that was written by Sotomayor. It was called "And the Ladies of the Club." This thick. I'm telling you, oh. I never wanted it to end. <laughs> it was so good, oh. and it's out of print. And I ordered three of them. I found them online, and I ordered them to give people in the women's club because I said these people are really going to appreciate this because Coral Gables Women's That's Club is kind of founded they founded the library in Coral Gables and you know um, but there are so many stories like that that you know I love to get into a book and and then I love like your books I mean I can read them and I really enjoy them <laughs> and and it's like but I don't I, I'm not spending three months reading it. <laughs> Yeah. No, I know. Listen, yeah. there's and there are some books that are doorstoppers that are very immersive and they're worth they're worth reading. Re reading. Yeah. I mean, it's like I'll do like if I'm going on vacation or I'm going to the grandchildren. Yes. I know that my mind needs something like lighter fare sure. because exactly. A, I just want lighter fare, and second is because I'm going to be exhausted at the end of a day of babysitting. <laughs> so you know, I make it's sure be three pages before you fall asleep. Before is that I what you're like telling me? Fall and you know, it's uh, yeah, that happens all the time, right? I want to say the whatever books we recommend, it's okay not to like, like them, them, and it's okay to DNF them. You know, that's a big conversation amongst authors and writers. Like, do you DNF a book? Do not finish. Uh -huh. um, do you like how many pages before you set a book down? And I think I'm like a fifty page. Like, if I'm not in it, fifty it's pages. Funny you should. Uh, yeah. The other day, I had a lot of time, and I didn't want to go all the way home, and I had to come back to Coral Gables, so I went to the library. I picked up a book that I thought was going to be entertaining and whatever, and I did. I read about a third of it. Yeah. <laughs> and I go, oh, I'm not checking this out. <laughs> And yeah, sometimes it it's just your mood. Like I've gone it back, I've it gone back, back to a book. Then. I've gone back to a book like a month or two later, and I'm like all of a sudden immersed in it. So it's sometimes like whatever you're going through. I don't. I know. think you're it's absolutely right though, because this book was supposed to be funny. Yeah. And I didn't find it that funny. Yeah. So I thought, you know what? Maybe with a glass of wine, this would have been hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't everything a little more hilarious with a glass of wine? Possibly. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, you can stay awake, right? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, you're not going to believe it, but our time is almost up. So if you had any final words, what it, when, you, when do you well, think you might let us in. know what's happening? For sure, tune in. I think our viewers are going to enjoy it, you know, because this is really about entertainment. I always, when I do talk to young writers, you know, they all want to give their theory and their views on life. And I said, your number one job is to entertain. Yeah. If you want to inform, if you want to do that, it's all secondary. You have to entertain. And now more so when there's all this other competition. Exactly. So I think viewers are going to be inter entertained between the two of us because we entertain ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> well, you were both very entertaining. So I thank you so much for thank you. allowing me to interview you. Uh, and uh, and I wish you a lot of luck. And I, I think 
you just might be on network again before it's all over. <laughs> And I'll say, I knew them when. Thank you. <laughs> so anyway, well, thank so thank you. it's great Gloria. to be here, Gloria. Thank you. Yeah. And again, thank you, South Florida PBS. I, if you remember, you get one of these once a, once a month and tells we you everything them. that's going on. Yeah. So uh, lots of good stuff. This is March and uh, April will be out pretty soon and lots of uh, great stuff. So thanks again for coming. Um, ladies. Good luck with your Thank new you show. Thank I you so much. We'll see a, you. An avid uh, viewer. And uh, until next time, keep making uh, good decisions and make a difference.